speaking this morning with the team from Percheron Therapeutics Chair, Dr. Charmaine Gittleson, Non-Exec Director, Dr. Gil Price, and Chief Exec, Dr. James Garner. Good morning. Good morning, Andrew. Look, James, firstly, uh, talk us through the transaction that Percheron has just completed and announced. Thanks, Andrew. We've completed a placement to sophisticated and institutional investors that at this stage raised uh, gross proceeds of $10.8 million. And uh, the use of this, uh, the use of proceeds here, the purpose of the transaction is primarily to fund our ongoing phase 2B clinical study of our lead drug, Avicursin ATL1102 in Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Of course, we've got an ongoing clinical trial there. We're expecting initial six month data in December. And uh, the proceeds of this transaction will allow us to complete that study uh, in 2025. We're also intending to do a share purchase plan for existing shareholders, which will uh, provide some further detail on in due course. Well, Charmaine, I suppose, tell us a bit more as far as the, the rationale for the fundraise now. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, I think everybody's aware that, you know, we, fin we ended the financial year in, in a very strong position. But there are unfortunately always ongoing costs when running a clinical trial. And we're not just running this phase 2B. We really are making a commitment to this space. would like to, if possible, get this under an FDA um, IND and get it to market as soon as possible, which means that there's, there's even more costs than just running the trial. And, and we alluded to that we want to do more work on the manufacturing. We want to keep these boys on drug for as long as possible. So there is always that ongoing need and there's the tension of when do you raise money? And we have the additional tension of the fact that we are coming towards a data readout. And one of the strategic aspects that the board thought about was if we waited until after data, um, and we have no idea of what the data is, good or bad, we really have no idea, it's blinded. But if we waited until after data, um, that the market might be expecting a raise at that time, and that may hold back the share price at that time. And we really didn't want to be in that type of situation. Also, um, you know, coming up to a data readout and a, a, a company that has transformed itself literally um, and is a good prospect, a good buy prospect, that there were a number of um, strong institutions that have been wanting to get into the share and we're very interested in coming in now. And so we felt that it was um, to our benefit uh, and to the benefit of the, the company and, and as a whole uh, to, to move into a, a, a placement now and give them the opportunity to come in now. So that, that's really why we did it now. Well, Gil, I suppose the obvious question, does this reflect any change as far as your partnering strategy? Thanks for the question, Andrew. Quite the contrary. You know, there, there really aren't very many biotech companies that take a, a product or a drug to market by themselves. Most partner, and we certainly will do the same. Um, having said that, having a strong balance sheet and the demonstrable support of investors puts us in the best possible negotiating position with a potential partner, particularly as we head into the JP Morgan Healthcare Conference in January. Well, Charmaine, uh, James mentioned a bit earlier about the intention around a, a share purchase plan. Uh, what are your expectations? We would like to be able to offer a share purchase plan to um, our retail investors. We've done so beforehand. We um, would like them to be able to participate uh, in in this as well as, as institutions. And so that is our intent, and we're working towards being able to do that. As James said, we will make an announcement around the timing, et cetera, in due course. And I suppose, Gil, just on the back of the, the fundraise, what's your cash runway looking like now? So... Our last raise was intended to fund us through the phase 2B clinical trial, and it will do that. This raise is intended to fund the study to its full completion, which in practice means funding through the entirety of the calendar 2025 and into 2026. The money also allows us to do more work in the background to prepare for future regulatory discussions and eventual commercialization. Um, it gives us some runway. Well, James, importantly, looking ahead with the, the raise now complete, what are your key upcoming milestones? Well, Andrew, look, financing transactions always capture everybody's attention uh, briefly when they occur, but really the 
big news for us is our December data readout. You know, that's going to be initial six month data for Averkursen and Duchenne. And uh, this is this is really a, a major inflection point for the company. And of course, it's not the only inflection point because we also have 12 month data from the study, which we're seeing in the middle of next year. So we um, we do have at least several bites of the cherry from this study alone. And then of course, in the background, as we've discussed before, we are out there as, as Gil's noted, trying to partner the drug with a larger company. And I think with that six month data in hand, with the trial now fully financed and with this, uh, you know, with this very sort of strong balance sheet behind us, I think we're in a great position to have those discussions as well. So with this, uh, with the, the financing needs to now answer, we get to focus again on the drug development, data in December, more data next year, and in the background, a really, really redoubled effort on the partnering front. James, Charmaine, Gil, good to speak. Thanks for your time.